Hello. In the next series of videos, we are going to talk about analog multipliers and some of their applications. An analog multiplier circuit is a circuit where the output is proportional to the product of two input signals. I've represented here the block diagram. This is the typical representation of an analog multiplier with two signals. In this case, I've labeled them Vx and Vy. One output signal, Vout, and the transfer function is Vout equals some scaling factor k times the product of Vx and Vy. Depending on the possible polarity of the input signals, the analog multipliers can be classified into uh, single quadrant multipliers, where they only accept a single polarity for both input signals, so both input signals are unipolar, and therefore the output is also unipolar. Two quadrant multipliers are those where one of the input signals has to be unipolar, but the other one can be bipolar, and the output therefore is bipolar. And uh, four quadrant multipliers are those which, uh, in which both signals can be bipolar signals, and the output is also a bipolar signal, so those will be the most flexible types of analog multipliers. Analog multipliers can be implemented both as discrete circuits or um, as a single IC, single integrated circuit. An example of a low-cost multiplier is the AD633, which I have represented there. It is an 8-pin device. It has two differential input signals, x1 and x2, correspond to the positive and negative input terminals in the input buffer, y1 and y2, same thing. So the differential input the signals will be x1 minus x2, y1 minus y2, um, and it has an output which is proportional to the product of those two input signals multiplied times a scaling factor of 1 over 10 volts. Uh, and in this case, it also has the possibility of adding an offset label Z. So the output transfer function, or the transfer function, is going to be equal to uh, the product of the two differential input signals, x1 minus x2 times y1 minus y2, divided by 10, or times 1 over 10, which was a scaling factor, plus uh, z. Uh, this is a 4 quadrant multiplier with a 10-volt full-scale voltage. And that means that the input, the differential input voltage can be plus minus 10 volts, uh, so can the common mode voltage, uh, as well as the output voltage can vary between plus minus 10 volts. If we look at the data sheet for a analog multiplier, some of the most salient characteristics that we will find uh, will be the accuracy, which represents the total error. Sometimes it is presented at a nominal temperature and a nominal supply voltage, and then uh, the variation with both temperature or the drift with both temperature and supply voltage are specified in the data sheet. And the total error is typically specified as percentage of the full scale voltage. Uh, sometimes the total error is split up into its different components or the different things that contribute to it, which will be the DC offset, that means the value of the output when both inputs are equal to zero. The nonlinearity, which is the maximum deviation from the output uh, or of the output from the nominal or ideal output when all the offset errors are nulled or cancelled out. And uh, the x, y, fifth through, the fifth through for each one of the input signals, which corresponds to the value of the output when either one of the input signals is equal to zero. Ideally, if one of the input signals is equal to zero, since we have a multiplier, the output will be zero. But it's the center amount of fifth row. And fifth row typically is dependent on frequency as well, so it is a nonlinear type of parameter. And then the dynamic performance comes to specify typically in terms of the small signal bandwidth, which just as for an op-amp is the frequency at which the um, magnitude of the output voltage decreases by 3 dBs from the maximum, from the maximum value at DC or at low frequencies. The slew rate, which represents the maximum, um, the maximum rate of change in output voltage uh, for a large signal. And it is related to the full power bandwidth, which is basically the maximum frequency of operation uh, when the output voltage is um, at its maximum value, so how much frequency you can run 
uh, how much of frequency signal you can have for the circuit without distortion and rotation. And then the settling time is the time that it takes from um, a change occurring at the, in the input to produce uh, a final output value within a certain tolerance of the nominal output value. So those are some of the important characteristics. You will notice that some of them are very similar to what you will encounter in an op-amp data sheet. However, analog multipliers are more complex circuits than op-amps, and um, because of that, they're also much more expensive circuits than op -amps. In order to get an idea of typical characteristics, or typical performance of an analog multiplier, I have drawn a little comparison of three analog multiplier ICs uh, that have been optimized for different uh, characteristics, different performance parameters. The first one is the AD633, which is the low-cost multiplier we have previously looked at. And uh, since it is a low-cost multiplier, we are expecting that the performance is going to be fairly average in all the different parameters. So notice uh, it specifies in the data sheet its total error as 2% of the full scale range at the nominal temperature of 25 degrees C or 3% of the full scale range over the entire temperature range, uh, minimum to maximum temperature. The nonlinearity error is 1% of full scale range. Uh, the feed through or worst case feed through is 1% of full scale range as well. And the offset is 50 millivolts. The output offset when both input signals are equal to zero. In terms of dynamic performance, it has a small signal bandwidth of 1 MHz, a slow rate of 20 volts per microsecond, and a settling time um, to 1% of its final value of 2 microseconds. In contrast, we can take a look at the AD534L, which is a precision multiplier. It has a total error of 0.25% of full scale at the nominal temperature of 25 degrees C, or 0.5% of full scale at uh, the overall temperature range, minimum to maximum temperature. So much improved with respect to the 633. Uh, Nonlinearity is also 10 times better than the 633, as well as FIFRO. And the offset is uh, 10 millivolts, so one fifth of the maximum offset for the 633. In terms of the dynamic characteristics, they are um, exactly the same as the 633, so one megahertz bandwidth. 20 volts per microsecond slow rate and 2 microseconds of settling time. The AD834, um, it's not a precision multiplier, but rather a high speed multiplier or a high bandwidth multiplier. And so, in terms of its um, Accuracy characteristics, the total error is comparable to that of the 633, has the same specifications, uh, same nonlinearity, slightly better fit through, uh, better offset. And then in terms of the um, small signal bandwidth characteristics or the dynamic characteristics, you can see it has a much better small signal bandwidth and it doesn't really have a specification for either the slow rate or the settling time. Uh, but it has some, some graphs that it shows some characteristic plots which uh, essentially show it's better for uh, high-speed applications. Uh, obviously, the difference between uh, a better multiplier or an average multiplier like the 633 is going to be mostly in the cost. And so you can see that uh, both the 534 and A34 multipliers are going to be um, much more expensive than the 633. And any multiplier is going to be uh, an order of magnitude at least more expensive than a standard op. So those are some of the basics of multiplier circuits. Uh, we're going to see uh, particular applications of analog multipliers. Uh, there are many of them. The ones that we're going to be focusing on, which is, is a sample, uh, will be mathematical operations such as multiplication, division, um, the square of a signal or the square root of a signal. Obviously, uh, an analog multiplier can also be used, and it is used, uh, to build RMS circuits, root circuits that compute the root mean square, uh, because that is a combination of a square root and, and a square. Uh, there's frequency doubling and shifting. 
um, analog multipliers are used in mixers, which are essentially circuits um, that generate new frequencies from a signal from, from an input signal of a given frequency. Uh, they will generate signals at uh, the heterolining frequencies, which are essentially uh, the sum and the difference of the two input frequencies. And we're also going to take a look at modulators and demodulators. And uh, once we are done with the applications, as we're looking at these applications, we're going to be looking at the analog multiplier as a block, just because it is, it is easier to see uh, how it can be combined with other circuitry to perform a certain operation from a block diagram standpoint, uh, from a transfer function standpoint. Uh, and then we're going to get into different possible implementations of that building block. Thank you.